All right, hey guys, hi. This is Radha Krishna. Welcome to Advanced Knowledge, where we try to make generalistic videos for all the subjects. And today I have an announcement to make. So we are making a series on physics, and uh, this is going to cover uh, most of the topics that there are out there. And uh, for now, the series is going to follow University Physics by Sears and Zamanskis. And uh, as soon as uh, we complete the things in the University of Physics, I mean, we are going to follow the structure of that uh, book, and then uh, we're going to delve into advanced topics such as string theory, quantum mechanics, you know, advanced relativity, so on and so forth. So this video, uh, you know, this series is also going to address uh, many of the tests that are out there, the competitive examinations. So all of the competitive examinations needs can be, you know, uh, feasted by this uh, video series so it's going to be a video series that covers basics as well as advanced concepts now uh, I'm also trying to tell you that uh, you know with along with physics we're also going to make parallel videos of mathematics because you know the language of science is maths so whatever maths that is required for physics that we are talking we will make a video prior to the physics video and we'll uh, upload it to the series of mathematics so you know you can follow our channel for the notifications and then you can learn a lot along with these videos of physics and mathematics we're also trying to make another uh, series and uh, uh, the multiple subjects like biology we are uh, trying to make some things on computer science electronics as well so for all those uh, notification and the advanced knowledge that uh, is out there subscribe to our channel so uh, that being said today we're going to talk about scalars and vectors right because as I said the language of uh, physics is mathematics and uh, any introduction to physics starts with scalars and vectors because the parameters in physics mostly can be addressed using scalars and vectors so first things first this is a basic introduction to scalars and vectors this is not uh, something that uh, you know comes from a perspective of tensors right so just uh, saying the po keeping a point out there that uh, you know the correct explanation of what is a scalar and vector will be understood when we talk about tensors but today we're going to talk it about the scalars and vectors in a basic way right so what is a scalar guys so when you hear about uh, scalar it's something that is related to scale right so the scale of something right for example if you take a parameter called as temperature okay the temperature is something that indicates how much heat is there right how much uh, heat is there in particular surrounding so for example if we say 18 degrees centigrade it is just a quantity that is representing uh, representing something so once we are given a quantity and a unit we can actually say what what is it talking about right for example if you are talking about heat or for the matter energy when we say 135 joules that is enough to say what it is talking about so 135 is the quantity joule is the unit of the quantity that is that it is describing right so such parameters which are uh, sufficient which which uh, you know require only this quantity with the unit are called as scalar scalars are something which are describable with something that is related to quantity okay now we have another uh, parameter this is called vector okay vectors are something that are describable using scale and direction okay for example we're talking about displacement over here and uh, displacement when i say for example i have moved from a to b this is b and then i have moved from b to c so this is my movement okay my first displacement is a b bar so this is my displacement how i'm going to describe this is the length of the displacement a b right the length from a to b and the direction a b cap okay so this is the quantity this is the scale and this is the direction that i have uh, moved in and the respective units and when it's come to displacement the units are going to be the length units meters or kilometers or whatever it is that we are expressing the displacement in and then we have uh, b to c movement and uh, it is pretty uh, straightforward right now so b c length into bc direction into the units or whatever uh, we are using so this is something which is called as a vector so there are a lot of parameters which come under vector displacement and the derivatives of displacement vector uh, velocity and then you've got acceleration you've got uh, you know angular velocity and so on and so forth so all of these are uh, uh, coming under vectors 
Now we are going to learn about uh, more about vectors and the properties of vectors and so on and so forth. Now when it comes to vectors guys there is a you know first thing we have to learn about vector addition. And vector addition is an interesting thing because vector addition also leads you to components of vectors and uh, other properties thereby. So vector addition when I say you take a vector a b bar okay and then there is another vector a c bar okay how you're going to add both of these vectors the meaning is that if uh, i have uh, you know made displacement from a, a c bar and then i have got an a b uh, c b bar displacement okay so the resulting displacement is going to be this way so i've started from a and i've finally reached b but uh, the path is different so the resultant is going to be the addition of both of these vectors so how do you add uh, vectors is uh, just you bring the vector parallelly to wherever the first vector is ending so i have bought this vector parallelly over here and then i am just finishing the triangle so this is called as a parallelogram law of addition addition of vectors okay so this is how you add the vectors if uh, they are like this but if they are like this i mean one vector is starting from the end point of another vector it is pretty straightforward to finish the triangle that the vectors are forming okay now uh, when we are talking about vector addition uh, vector subtraction is also straightforward so what we have over here is an ab and then there's ac which is in the negative direction so how do you uh, find out the uh, uh, what we say subtraction is that you just parallelly transform this over here and then the, you finish the triangle so this is going to be what this is going to be b bar minus c bar because the c bar is in the negative direction so we have understood what is uh, vector addition now we are going to go into vector uh, components okay so vector components is also pretty interesting uh, thing so the thing is that any vector can be divided into multiple components because finally these components can be added to form the another uh, the main vector right so uh, just as we have seen in this uh, addition we can say that the resultant vector can be divided into two components ac bar and cb bar so it's something like this ab bar can be divided into ac bar plus cb bar so this is called as uh, componenting a vector so dividing the vector into multiple components whereby after addition of all those components you are going to get the final vector once again so where this is useful we are going to understand when we describe a, a particular vector for example i am just going to give you a uh, illustration for example you are carrying your school bag or college bag so how the school bag is looking like so this is the straps that you have and you have your shoulder over here okay and this is the strap right and then you have got your neck and then another strap is on your right shoulder so this is your shoulder and these both are straps which are leading to the bag so you are carrying this bag on both of these straps so the point i'm trying to make here is that this this strap the tension of the strap is in this direction okay the tension of the strap is in this direction and for this strap the tension is in this direction but the weight of the bag is you know downwards where the gravity is pulling it vertically downwards so how uh, we are going to solve this is using vector component i mean we can explain it very easily for example you take this as a t t okay t1 the vector of the tension of the strap and then your bag weight is w okay now how because this is going in this way this is going in this way and there's a perpendicular component to it how the bag is balanced is like this when you're dividing t1 into its particular t1 horizontal and t1 vertical components just as we have talked and again here you are going to t2 vertical and t1 t2 horizontal components the thing is that the bag does not have horizontal displacement right the bag is not moving horizontally it is stable right so t1h will cancel t2h finally because the bag it does not have horizontal displacement both of the horizontal components are in opposite directions and they cancel each other so the resultant forces that we have is t1 vertical and t2 vertical and mind you all of these things are vectors i'm talking about right so this vector has been divided into horizontal vertical components and this vector has been divided uh, similarly so we are adding both of the vertical components over here which has to be equal to weight because the bag is stable and it does not move vertically as well when we stand right 
so this is how the components of the vectors can help you in solving many problems right now we have completed till vector components vector addition and today you know we are also going to talk about um, various products of vectors okay and when i say vector products there are two different types of multiplication that uh, can be done in vectors the first type of uh, multiplication or the product is called as dot product or a scalar product okay and uh, the second type of uh, product is called as a uh, uh, you know cross product or vector product so it is evident from the name that the result of the first product is going to be a scalar and the, the result of the second product is going to be a vector okay so we're going to talk about dot product right now so dot product basically it's uh, like this so when you are given two vectors a bar and b bar the dot product is denoted by a bar dot b bar hence the name dot product a is nothing but mod a mod b cos phi and the phi is the angle between these vectors a and b so this is a basic definition of a dot product now you know this is useful in many ways for example when we are trying to calculate the work done by any particular force what we do is we calculate the dot product of the force and the displacement that it has caused to the particular uh, you know uh, uh, element so f bar dot s bar is the work done by the particular force so, so there are many ways in which this dot product is useful and then there is uh, also uh, you know a component of a projection of a vector on another vector so for example if you are talking about a bar and b bar how we are going to calculate the component of a bar along b bar okay so there is this if you are dividing a bar into components which is parallel to b bar and perpendicular to b bar a bar components so a bar i'm trying to divide in two components one uh, component is perpendicular to b bar and another component is parallel to b bar so this particular parallel to b bar is uh, called as a projection of a bar along b bar because when you're you know standing on b bar and seeing a bar there is only a certain length of a bar that is visible so what it is going to be basically a bar which is parallel to b is all always going to have the b cap direction and the length we have to calculate and then we will have the projection now how the length is calculated it's pretty simple so you know you got the angle between the vectors and it's just a case of trigonometry that you have to put so the length of this vector a bar is a and then the adjacent side right so this is going to be the cos phi a cos phi so the length is going to be a cos phi and it's along b cap direction now when you are seeing a cos phi b cap and you also got here mod a mod b cos phi all that you have to understand is how to write this projection in respect of a bar dot b bar right so when you are writing a bar dot b bar you got mod b but we have to convert it into b cap so what you do is multiply by b cap and divide by mod b so this is how you write a projection of a vector along another vector so projection of vector along another vector is nothing but the dot products of the vector multiplied by the uh, direction of the resultant uh, vector divided by the length of the vector b so this is how we talk about projections of a vector now that we have completed the dot product we are going to uh, talk about a vector product vector product is also known as cross product right so how we uh, denote this is basically a bar cross b bar right and uh, this is nothing but a bar mod b bar and it is sin phi phi is the angle between a bar and b bar now this is also useful when we are talking about non conservative forces or rotational uh, momentum in liquids and fluids so on and so forth now we are going to uh, you know talk about um, how the vector product and dot product are calculated when a vector is given in in its uh, i cap j cap k cap components and when i say i cap j cap k cap 
these are nothing but the unit vectors along x y z direction so this is just uh, a convention that is followed naturally uh, across uh, various domains i mean when i say i cap j cap k cap it's the unit vectors and when i say unit vectors as i said it is the magnitude is one and the direction is along whatever direction that is so when i say i cap the direction is going to be x and the unit vector is i cap and this is similarly j is for y this is j and this is the unit vector along z is k cap so any vector in three dimensions can be actually divided into these particular components because they again uh, come under basis vectors okay the basis vectors basically say that any vector in those uh, three dimensional or n dimensional space can be represented by the components in of this basis vectors okay for example uh, you know just take the basis vectors as a1 a2 a3 so on an in an n dimensional space any vector b can be written as a summation of a1 into some magnitude along uh, a1 plus b1 in uh, a2 into magnitude along a2 so on and so forth so a linear combination of the vectors can generate any vector in that particular n dimensional space such vectors are called as basis vectors and you know for uh, a uh, normal cartesian three dimensional coordinate system it's always x y z or any other three vectors which are not uh, parallel to each other they can always generate any other the vector okay and this uh, particular x y z vectors also have a unique property that they are all orthogonal to each other right so as i, I was saying that if any vector is given v bar we can actually write it in uh, as a linear combination of all these three vectors now we are going to talk about how we are going to calculate the particular a bar dot b bar and a cross b okay how we are going to calculate this when a bar for example is a 2i cap plus 3j cap plus 4k cap and b bar is 3i cap plus 4j cap plus 5k cap okay now understand that a bar dot b bar is mod a mod b cos phi so phi is the angle between a bar and b bar and if it is 90 this is going to be 0 if it is 0 it's going to be 1 now interesting property over here is that i bar and i cap and i cap angle is 0 i cap and j cap angle is 90 i cap and k cap angle is 90 so when you're doing a dot product it's basically the distributive multiplication of each of the term uh, with the each of the another vectors term so it's almost like 2 i cap into 3i cap plus 2i cap into 4j cap plus 2i cap into 5k cap plus 3j cap into 3i cap so on and so forth so when you do that you understand that i cap into i cap dot so it is almost like 2 into 3 that is 6 i cap dot i cap right and when you do i cap dot i cap magnitudes are 1 into 1 into cos of 0 that is 1 so it's going to be 2 into 3 into 1 and when you do 2i cap dot 4j cap so it's going to be 2 into 4 so 2 into 4 is 8 into i cap dot j cap and i cap dot j cap over here if you see i magnitude is 1 j magnitude is 1 cos phi i cap dot j cap angle is uh, 90 because i is along x and j is along y so i cap dot j cap is going to be 0 right so all of the cross terms are going to be 0 so all that you have is the corresponding uh, uh, a multiplication of i cap i cap j cap j cap and k cap k cap so you've got uh, 6 plus 3 uh, 3 into 4 is 12 plus 4 into 5 is 20 so finally it is how much so it is 18 plus 20 right which is 38 so a bar dot b bar is 38 now an interesting factor over here is that you can actually find out the angle between both of this a bar and b bar so uh, you know expressing this in the co coordinate system 2 3 4 will somewhere be here and 3 4 5 will somewhere be here so this is one vector this is another vector the angle between this can be actually calculated using this a bar dot b bar because we once we got the a bar dot b bar which is 38 and the mod a is going to be root of 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square from this here right it's just uh, root of uh, this is just calculating the distance between origin and this point right so this is the mod of that and uh, the mod of uh, b is going to be underscore 3 square plus 4 square plus 5 square right and then we've got cos phi 
Now, phi we can actually calculate from here. This is going to be cos inverse of 38 by root of whatever 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square into root of 3 square plus 4 square plus 5 square. So this is how you can also find the angles between uh, angle between the two vectors using a dot product when uh, the two vectors are given. Now a similar thing can also be done using a cross product. Okay, The cross product is calculated by uh, the determinant of uh, the particular vector. So this is going to be ax, ay, az, bx, by, bz. And the ax, ay, az are nothing but this uh, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5. So we put 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, i, j, k. And you always do is uh, calculate the determinant. So it's going to be i cap into 3 into 5 minus 4 into 4. That is 15 minus 16 minus j cap into. So you've got 2 into 5 minus 4 into 3. That is 10 minus 12. And you've got k cap into 4 into 2 minus 3 into 3. But is 8 minus 9. So this is how you find a determinant basically of a three dimensional matrix. So if you are not familiar with how to find a determinant, you can always refer to some other videos which uh, tell you how to find a determinant. Basically, I will tell you quickly. So what you do is basically you take this element i cap and you multiply with whatever is coming over this square. So i cap should be 5 into 3 minus 4 into 4, 15 minus 16 minus j cap. For the middle thing, we have to put a minus. So for this, it's going to be uh, this vectors. So 5 into 10 minus 4 into 3, that is 12. And k cap is going to be uh, this 4, this 4. So it's going to be 8 minus 9. So that's what we have done here. So it is minus i cap minus uh, 2 into minus j. So that's plus 2j cap. Plus, uh, my, so it's going to be minus k cap. So you, how you see that it's a resultant is a vector. So the thing is a cross uh, a bar cross b bar is always a vector. So this is how we calculate the vector product and the dot product. So we have understood how we, uh, you know, manipulate and use vectors. And uh, in the further videos, we are going to delve into various usages of the vectors and also start learning some science. So uh, I hope you guys like this video. If you have any more suggestions of uh, how I go about the videos and, uh, you know, always if you have some doubts, you can always put these in the comments. Uh, whereby I or someone else will actually try to uh, resolve your doubts. So uh, I'll meet you in the next video guys. Uh, goodbye.